Hi, this is part two of our discussion, burn injury. Remember I said that uh, burns, specifically your major burn injury, has a TBSA of equal to or more than 25%, right? So that's the basic knowledge. Now what will happen now if you have the specific type of injury or problem? Now look, burn injury of TBSA of more than 25, burns a TBSA of more than or equal to 25%. What will happen now? So it will give you basically four conditions. First, there will be what we call, dito tayo, okay? There is what we call cell lysis, okay? Next, number two, second problem, there will be possible inhalation injury. And remember that there's a break in the skin and the skin is considered as first line of defense. So there will be break in the physical barrier, okay? And last, there will be blood vessel wall injury. Blood vessel wall injury, okay? So these are four common concerns if you have major burn injury at the BSA of more than or equal to 25%, okay? So that's the main concern. Now, what will happen now? Let's start with cell lysis. Remember, in your fundamentals of nursing, particularly in your fluids and electrolytes, I said that the most abundant electrolyte inside the cell, okay, cation is your potassium. And an ion is what they call your phosphate. Remember, piso and pico. I hope you can still remember that. Piso stands for potassium inside, sodium outside. And these are your cation or positively charged electrolytes. Pico stands for Phosphate inside, chloride outside. Your pico is for an ion or negatively charged electrolytes. So what will happen now if there is cell lysis? Cell lysis can cause release of potassium from intra to extracellularly. So there will be release of potassium from intracellular to extracellular. Am I right? Release of potassium from intra to extracellular. So what will happen now to your potassium in the blood? It increases. It causes hyper, hyperkalemia. Remember, increased potassium in the blood. And remember I said that the relationship of potassium and impulse transmission, they are actually, okay, they are what? Inversely or directly proportional. Pag potassium, directly proportional. Okay, remember, sa lahat na electrolyte, siya lang ang directly proportional. The rest are inversely. So, an increase of potassium in the blood will result to increase impulse transmission. Kaya nga, hyperkalemia will increase the heart rate of the patient. And an increase in the heart rate, pag babalis ang tibok ng puso, hindi pa siya napuno ng dugo, nag-contract na. Therefore, pag hindi pa siya napuno ng dugo at nag-contract na, anong ilalabas na dugo? Konti lang. So that will result to decrease cardiac output. So increased heart rate will lead to decreased cardiac output. And a decrease in the cardiac output will result to decreased tissue perfusion. And a decrease in your tissue perfusion will result to organ failure. Am I right? That will result to organ failure. And guess what? An increase in the blood potassium level, hyperkalemia, will also increase the risk of what we call cardiac, cardiac arrest. Diba? Pag mataas yung potassium, makakos ng cardiac arrest. Kaya nga, we cannot give potassium chloride in bolus or in high concentration because it causes cardiac arrest. And what is cardiac arrest? Cardiac arrest means cessation of heartbeat. Pag hindi na nag-contract ang heart, hindi nag-move ang heart, hindi nag okay, na walang co-heart contraction, okay, decreased cardiac, okay, okay, patient with cardiac arrest rather will result to decreased cardiac output. And again, that leads to organ failure. Now, what about this one? Possible inhalation injury. Remember, carbon monoxide poisoning. Pag nalanghap ng patient yung carbon monoxide, again, there is a condition called carboxy hemoglobin. Anong sabi natin? Pag carboxyhemoglobin na siya, what will happen to its ability to carry oxygen? Decrease. 
Kaya nga, carboxyhemoglobin leads to decrease oxygen, oxygen carrying ability. So what will happen to oxygen in the blood? Mababa. Kasi nga, hindi makary ng blood kasi napuno siya ng carbon. Am I right? So this will result to hypoxemia. Decrease oxygen in the blood. And decrease oxygen in the blood will result to decrease tissue perfusion. Am I right? So walang oxygen supply yung mga tissues. That will again lead to organ failure. Now what about this one? Break in the physical barrier. Remember the scheme. So a break in the physical barrier will increase the risk of what we call infections. Am I right? Okay. And what else? Remember the skin plays a vital role for thermal regulation. A break in the physical barrier, a break in your skin will affect regulation of temperature. So this will result to altered okay, thermal regulation. So, another concern. Okay? What about on this side? Blood vessel wall injury. Remember, an injury in the blood vessel of the patient will increase its permeability. Am I right? So, what will happen now if the blood vessel is permeable? This would promote what? Of course, fluid, fluid shifting. Tell me, what is the movement of fluid if you have increased permeability? Answer, Plasma to interstitial movement. That is why if there is this what we call fluid shifting. What will happen now? Pag nagsisilabasan yung fluid, what will happen to your blood? Concentrated or diluted? That will make the blood concentrated. So you will have hemoconcentration. And what specific test will confirm hemoconcentration? Answer, hematocrit. So what will happen to hematocrit if the blood is concentrated? Increase hematocrit. Ngayon, kung may fluid shifting, ano ang kasama ng fluid na larabas? Siyempre, ang electrolyte na sodium. Ngayon lang, okay? Ang electrolyte na sodium. So pag nagsisilabasan yung sodium out from the blood vessel, what will happen to sodium in the blood? Decrease. Causing hypo, hypo natremia. Sir, I don't get it. Explain. Remember, this is your blood vessel. Am I right? Okay, the fluid inside is plasma, the fluid outside is interstitial. May mga RBC tayo, WBC, platelet. Am I right? Dito sa labas, may mga cells din. But I will focus more sa cells dito sa loob ng blood vessel, sa dugo. Remember, I said, pico, piso. But focus on P, okay, in your piso, okay, in your cation. The most abundant electrolyte inside the cell is potassium, potassium in the most abundant electrode outside the cell is your sodium. Am I right? I said, exposure to extreme heat burn injury will cause cell lysis or cell injury. Pag nasira ang cell, lalabas yung potassium from intracellular to extracellular. Lalabas siya. So kung lalabas ang potassium out sa cell, tataas ang potassium sa dugo. Am I right? Causing hyperkalemia. Next. An injury in the blood vessel will increase its permeability. So kung permeable siya, magsisilabasan ang fluid. What is the movement of fluid? Plasma to interstitial. Plasma to interstitial. Anong kasama ng fluid na lalabas? Sodium because sodium attracts water. Lalabas din ang sodium kasama ng fluid. Therefore, kung lalabas ang sodium, what will happen to sodium in the blood? Decrease, causing hyponatremia. Can you follow? I hope you get it right. Now, let's go back. Because of fluid shifting at naglisisilabasan yung fluid from plasma to interstitial, bababa ngayon ang blood volume, causing hypovolemia. So, fluid shifting results to hypovolemia. At pag hindi na correct ang hypovolemia, it leads to what we call hypovolemic shock. Remember, what causes shock here? The cause of hypovolemic shock is burn injury. Kaya ang tawag natin dito ay burn shock or hypovolemic shock. Ngayon, a patient with hypovolemic shock or burn shock requires compensation or adaptation of the body. Kaya nga, during hypovolemic shock, there will be massive stress responses. Okay? Nalagyan na lang natin dito kasi nga 
masyadong nasa side na baka hindi niyo mabasa. So what will happen if there's massive stress response? Massive stress re response results to what? Stimulation of adrenal gland and there will be release of catecholamines or catecholamines. So what will happen now? Okay, pag na-stimulate ang adrenal gland at na-release ang catecholamines or catecholamines. Okay, number one, let's start. Pag na-stimulate ang adrenal gland, the adrenal gland now will release a hormone okay, that will adapt okay, or cope with your stress. There will be release of what we call cortisol. Remember, another name of cortisol is glucocorticoid. Am I right? We call it glucocorticoid because it has a direct effect in the glucose. Ibig sabihin, pag tumataas ang cortisol, tumataas din ang glucose. It causes hyperglycemia. Question, is glucose a form of energy? Yes, kaya nga maraming glucose sa dugo. Bakit maraming glucose sa dugo? Kasi kailangan mo ng maraming energy. Bakit kailangan ng maraming energy? Kasi stress ka. Ang tawag doon, stress adaptation. Can you follow? Next, what will happen now if there's stimulation of adrenal gland and release of catecholamines? This will result to an increase in your metabolism. Remember I said, an increase in the metabolism will result to increase in the patient's calorie requirement. Am I right? It increases patient's calorie requirement. Requirements. Kaya nga sabi natin, okay, we require TPN, dietary modification, high calorie, high protein, high carb, high fat, high vitamins. Na discuss natin yan, right? Next, an increase in the metabolism will also increase hydrochloric acid production. So anong complication niya? Peptic ulcer disease. Am I right? Next, an increase in the metabolism will also increase the risk of having metabolic Acidosis. Why? Because of increase in the metabolic acid production. Next, sir, release of catecholamines or catecholamines. When you say catecholamines, catecholamines, these are your epinephrine and norepinephrine. Therefore, release of epinephrine and norepinephrine will result to vasoconstriction. Strict shun. Am I right? Remember, epinephrine will constrict the blood vessel because these are actually substance ester catecholamines that will mimic your sympathomimetic effect or prolong sympathetic effect. Now, when the blood vessels are constricted, blood flow is not possible. That is why that will result to okay, tissue, tissue injury. Am I right? Ngayon, pag ang pasyente ba may infection, may tissue injury? Yes. If the patient cannot regulate temperature, will it cause tissue injury? Yes. So you can connect it there as a tissue injury. Hold on. Let me erase this per K first. So infection and altered thermoregulation will result to, ayan, baba, tatalon yan, kay baba, slide, and then punta sa tissue injury. Correct? Next. Catecholamines, kay epinephrine and norepinephrine, sabi ko, kay they prolong sympathetic effect. Pag sympathetic effect yan, what will happen to your vital signs? Siyempre, elevated. So that follows, kay sympathetic effect, catecholamines will increase the heart rate of the patient. Ang tanong, increase in the heart rate, what will happen to cardiac output? Of course, decrease. Remember, increased heart rate will decrease cardiac output. So you can connect it there. So increased heart rate will result to decrease cardiac output. Tatalon yan, tapos punta dito, connect there, decrease cardiac output. Can you follow? So these are concerns or problems related to major burn injury. I hope you understand this. Okay, copy first. Okay, so we're done discussing a brief pathophysiology of your burn injury. This time, let's talk about the different stages and the, okay, the different fluids and electrolyte abnormalities or imbalances specific to stage of burn injury. Don't forget, this is a highlight topic in your examination, particularly stages of burn injury. Okay, let's start. So when you say stages of burns, okay, there are several stages. Number one, the first stage is what we call the emergent phase. 
Okay. When you say emergent phase, it refers to okay, an actual exposure to three case extreme heat. Refers to actual exposure. Okay, in the heat source. Number two is what we call your shock phase. Okay, don't forget this. Shock phase occurs on the first 24 to 48 hours of burn injury. Okay, it occurs on the first 24 to 48 hours. Now, take note. The movement of fluid, okay, the movement of fluid during shock phase is plasma to interstitial. Do not forget that. Plasma to interstitial. Because of this movement, tanong, what are the different fluids and electrolyte imbalances if you have this type of movement? Now listen carefully. This is your blood vessel, plasma, interstitial. What is the movement of fluid? Plasma to interstitial. Plasma to interstitial. Therefore, what are fluids and electrolyte imbalances? Pag nagsisilabasan yung fluid, that will make the blood concentrated, giving you hemoconcentration. That is evidenced by an increase in the hematocrit. Next, pag nagsisilabasan yung fluid, that decreases the blood volume, resulting to hypovolemia. Kaya nga pag hindi makorrect, it leads to shock. Kaya tawag shock phase. We call it shock phase kasi common dito ang shock because the movement is plasma to interstitial. Kaya, what's your key question? What's your priority on the first 24 to 48 hours? Answer, prevention of shock. Can you follow? Now, a decrease in the blood volume or hypovolemia that is actually evidenced by... Remember, decreased CVP means hypovolemia. Next, letter D. Because of what we call cell injury, brought about the exposure to extreme heat, cell lysis happens. And in their cell lysis, sabi natin, it causes hyperkalemia. And because of fluid shifting, letter E, because of fluid shifting, lumalabas yung fluid kasama ang sodium, resulting to hyponatremia. And take note, letter F. Patient on this phase, take note, decreased blood volume. Decreased blood volume will result to decreased renal perfusion, leading to decreased glomerular filtration rate, giving you what? Of course, decrease in your urine output. Can you follow? There will be a decrease in the urinary output. Next, letter G, patient will have metabolic acidosis. Okay? So these are fluids and electrolyte imbalances on the first 24 to 48 hours of burn injury. Next, the third stage of burn injury is what we call fluid remobilization phase, okay? Or other book, they call this as diuretic phase. Diuretic phase. And question, when will this stage happen? It occurs, don't forget this, two to five days post burn injury. Okay? And please be reminded of the movement of your fluid. The movement of fluid is interstitial to plasma. Remember kanina? Plasma to interstitial. Ito, baliktad. Interstitial to plasma. So having said that, okay, question, what are fluids and electrolyte imbalances if you have this type of movement? Okay, look, balikan natin. Blood vessel, plasma, interstitial. The movement is interstitial to plasma interstitial to plasma so what are fluids and electrolyte imbalances letter a syempre pag bumabalik ng fluid inside the blood vessel the blood maraming tubig the blood becomes what diluted so you will have hemodilution as evidenced by a decrease in your hematocrit next letter b pag bumabalik ng fluid that will increase the blood volume resulting to hyper Volemia. At ang sabi ko, okay, this is actually reflected by your CVP. Kung kanina, decreased CVP reflects hypovolemia. Ano naman for hypervolemia? Increase in your central venous pressure. Next, letter D. Remember, yung nakalabas na, okay, yung nakalabas na potassium out sa cell 
babalik na naman siya ngayon inside the cell. So pag babalik sila inside the cell, bababa ang potassium na nasa dugo kasi they will get inside the cell, resulting to hypokalemia. Next, letter E. Sir, bumabalik din fluid inside the blood vessel. So what will happen to your sodium? Babalik din ba? Hindi. Ang mangyayari, tutunawin ng tubig ang blood. Remember, there's too much tubig, there's too much fluid, there's too much water that will dilute the blood, hemodilution, causing hyponatremia. Remember, the cause of hyponatremia is hemodilution. Ibig sabihin, sa sobrang dami ng tubig, ang dugo lasaw. So pag nalasaw siya, natunaw po ang sodium sa dugo, making the case sodium now diluted, causing hyponatremia. Can you follow? Next letter F, tingnan natin, an increase in the blood volume will increase your renal perfusion leading to an increase in your glomerular filtration rate giving you an increase in the urinary output. Kaya ang tawag, diuretic phase kasi ihi ka ng ihi. Can you follow? And the last stage of burn injury is what we call the convalescent phase. Other book, they call this as rehabilitation phase. Okay, question. When will this phase begin? This will actually begin immediately once diuresis is completed. Okay? Begins when diuresis is completed. Okay? So these are the different stages of burn injury as well as their fluids and electrolyte imbalances. Don't forget this. Okay? So let's proceed to another K video clip. This will be your part three, okay, of your burn injury. Okay? Bye. See you on the other clip.